Oi! Stop spamming it! <laughs> oh! Oh, what have we got? What is this? What is this? Hi, I'm Rich Newbold, Game Director on Jurassic World Evolution 2. I'm here to show you today a closer look at the game, including our realistic dinosaurs, enhanced creativity, and deeper management. Okie dokie. Jurassic World Evolution 2 is a dinosaur management simulation game that builds upon the success of the first game released in 2018. The game right. includes new features, content, gameplay mechanics, and of course, new dinosaurs. I'm Adam Woods, Better. and I'm the executive producer working <laughs> on Jurassic World Evolution 2. We're really looking forward to bringing players an incredible Jurassic World experience. Its head looked like it was going to snap. <laughs> oh, development diary, oh, what? Jurassic World Evolution 2 Dairy. includes four game modes. In campaign mode, players will experience an original Jurassic story that picks up where Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom left off. They're going to be working alongside iconic characters from the films, voiced by original talent, such as Bryce Dallas Howard and Jeff Goldblum. We have our Chaos Theory mode, where players will be experiencing different what-if scenarios from various films within the franchise. We have our Sandbox mode that allows players to be fully creative and a Challenge mode that will test their part building skills. We now have a variety of locations that the player can experience. Each of these locations have their own unique challenges that the player must face, including their own bespoke weather conditions such as sand and snowstorms. It takes us away oh, from the tropical you. feeling of Jurassic World Evolution and away from the, the Islands of the Five Deaths and kind of really opens up into more of a Jurassic World. I'm Jim Stimson and I'm lead designer on Jurassic World Evolution 2. No Zuda, though. We've expanded the range of dinosaurs that we've got in the game now. So while we've got land dinosaurs, we have also included flying and marine reptiles too. We've got more behaviors and interactions uh, between dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 2. We've added these in to bring oh. an extra layer of realism and authenticity to our dinosaur behavior. We've been working really hard on improving nice. the hunting and fighting system so they're more dynamic. We have group attacks now, so packs of velociraptors will attack their prey. We've also been adding more depth to their social and environmental behaviors, so they'll now interact with the world around them in a more authentic way. Oh. Dinosaur creation and research tasks are now handled by a new staff member, the scientist. They're going to be part of all aspects of dinosaur creation, from the very beginning to the very end. As part of the creation process, the players will be manipulating the dinosaur DNA to Don't increase know if I'm too or decrease the, the chance aspect. of traits appearing when the dinosaur's alive. And one of these traits might be being more resilient to disease. With your scientists, you Last need to be really you. careful how you manage them. Each time you assign them a task, they get a little bit of stress. If you don't rest them, then you risk them getting burnt out. And then if they do become burnt out, and then you assign them another task, then there is an increased risk of sabotage. We've also added a new territory okay. system. So our dinosaurs will dynamically create this territory depending on the different things and the enclosures that it might need as part of its environmental requirements. Dinosaur territory can overlap as well. With some dinosaurs, that's going to be fine because we've got cohabitation, so some dinosaurs are happy to live with others. Sometimes as well, they don't like other species of dinosaurs. And when that happens, dinosaurs can fight and the winner gets to keep the territory uh, and the loser will go and have to rebuild their territory and find the things that it needs Oh, elsewhere. nice! That we looked no great! We no have herbivore feeders in Jurassic World Evolution 2. What we've replaced it with is, is paleobotany. We've reimagined prehistoric plants that the player must utilize to feed their herbivores within their territories. Each dinosaur will want different things, so it allows you to create a bespoke enclosure for your dinosaurs. Ooh. If it's just one species in there, then, then it's very easy to create that. But if you have two or more, then there becomes more of a, of a puzzle element there to, to creating this, this wonderfully unique enclosure for these, these different dinosaur species right. to, to live in. We've also introduced new guest interest groups in the parks as well. So hey, the different nerds. types of guests will want to see different things in your parks. So we have general, we have adventure, we have nature and luxury. Oh. Around the enclosure of a big <laughs> carnival, you will have lots of adventure guests. So when you place down uh, an amenity, you can tailor that to be more interesting to your adventure guests. And by doing that, you're going to make more money. Alongside the deeper management that Ooh. the guest interest groups will Ooh. bring, the players will have an opportunity to customize the look and feel of these guest buildings. We've got a modular system that will change some of the models on it. You'll be able to change the color palette so you can make it feel very unique. Within the new environments, players now have a range of natural scenery items and surface textures that they oh, can use nice. to further customize their parks. Alongside the different ways the players can change the appearance of their parks and their environments, we've also been looking in the ways the player can change the appearance of their dinosaurs. What we've added in game is very complementary to the different environments, but as a player, you know, we're going to leave it up to you 
you're going to be able to do what you want to do uh, and have the dinosaurs look the way you want them to look. Players should be really excited about Nothing using all there, the different though. creativity tools and building their own fully realised Jurassic World however they want. I'm really excited for the players to get their hands on the new management that we've added into the game. Things like the scientists, the guest types, it really changes how the game plays and I really can't wait to see what they do with it. I really can't wait to see the players' reactions to the new dinosaurs. The new behaviours and interactions, I think, bring the dinosaurs to life better than ever before. We hope you've enjoyed this deeper look into Jurassic World Evolution 2, and we're thrilled to be showing you even more over the next few weeks and months. Hey! Is that it? Is that, all, is that a lot? I think that might be a lot. That looks like it. Yeah, it's probably going to end there, right? Uh, so you've got rocks. You've got plenty of rocks. You've got the gyrosphere knocking about. You've got Triceratops and Stegosaurs actually together, which is interesting because they've sort of shown that Stegosaurs and Triceratops don't uh, like to live together. Um, John Robertson became a member. Thank you. I'm a dino. Hey, Beaver. It's my brother Cade's birthday today. Oh, is it Cade's? Happy birthday, Cade. Uh, and French Toast. Hello, Beaver. I'm very excited for this game. I think everybody is. So we've got... Um, oh, no, you do get to see my mouse. Oh, good. Okay, so you've got the rocks here. That's good. Uh, the fence is nothing new. I think this is an Amargosaur. I think it looks like it's top of its head's missing a bit. Two Stegosaurs, a Gyrosphere, a Brachiosaur. Um, Triceratops looks around about the same as the other ones. You've got a nice uh, variation of trees. Um, this is the Avery. Ooh, is it close to the... I'm just trying to see, do we spot anything that's outside? I don't think so. You've got two trinons, you've got a viewing area. Um, I'm hoping we get something like Quetzalcoatlus, that would be pretty sweet. Um, okay, Tyrannodon's there. Different trees, hopefully we, you can still do a little bit extra with the, the terrain inside the Avery, because the way the Avery was before, you couldn't really do anything. Um, it was like, you just place Avery down, put things in it and then you just add capacity and then charge more and it's just a money maker and gives you star rating so hopefully that's we we get to add like these trees these conifer looking trees that are quite nice um this is a lovely animation hold on we'll have a look at this yeah look at that bam that's nice now again i'm hoping that it doesn't just become this thing where oh we've seen it a million times you know sort of thing you got the nice animation there of the um, Celiophysis interacting. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I know, I know. It's, it's not a dinosaur. There we go. But this is interesting. I mean, look, it show, this is a gyrosphere road here. And you've got the stegosaur as well as these raptors. Now, are they actually hunting? Or is this just a running animation? Oh, it's hard to tell. Because with JPOG, it was like a random, like, okay, they would latch on, and then if, you know, they managed to do enough damage to the stegosaur, they would die. If there's enough of them. But most of the times, if Raptor attack a stegosaur in JPOG, it would fall off, and the stegosaur would hit it with its tail and be dead. So, is that likely to happen in this case? Because the way the battles were with um, Jurassic World Evolution was that you, they would have to, like, get into a, the right position, and then once in the right position, then the animation would take place. So with hunting animations, are we going to see a similar thing? Are we going to have, like, two raptors sort of waiting around for the third raptor to run into the right position, and then they do the chase? Uh, hopefully not. I'd like to see more of a dynamic situation, but now that we've got way more rocks and uh, other kind of aesthetics... I don't know. I mean, I'd love, I'd love if that was the case. I really would. I mean, this guy looks like he's just running off up this way. And then this one kind of turns and goes this way. And then you get this other raptor down here, which starts to run. But then he sort of circles back. It's as if they're going like round the side of the, uh, the stegosaur. Don't know what this guy's doing. As far as like aesthetics go or UI, why are they like normal colored faces? Why, why can't they just be like blue? <laughs> Like, you know, everybody else's. Everyone's like just that tinge of blue over the top. That, I think, would work better. Maybe I wouldn't have a problem with that. So let's have a look. What do we have? Uh, we've got logistics, genetics, and welfare. Faster research. Decrease task time by 50% for research task. So instead of just like, you know, when you have the research facility and you just set something off, now there's a reason and a, a thought behind it. Um, and you you pay researchers to do certain things. Uh, motivated, increase stress limit by four. Okay, so when you give these people or these researchers um, the opportunity or you hire them and they do research, 
they they have perks they uh, also cost an amount so what motivated faster research cheaper research um altruistic salary reduce the salary by 50 percent that's an interesting that's an interesting perk oh he's cheaper let's have a look at everything that was in Jurassic world evolution and now expand upon it so instead of just doing clicking on research how about we hire researchers and in a way this is frontier um grabbing their planet zoo method and putting it into Jurassic World Evolution. So you would have zookeepers, you would have maintenance staff. Now you've got these guys. Uh, I think I like the idea, I really do. I think this is great. Uh, I would just change the faces to blue just to fit in with the aesthetics. I think it's a bit jarring. It's like, oh, they're realistic people. Uh, oh no, there was cheap incubation there. Reduces the thingy for 30%. Okay. Obviously you got the park rating, salary, uh, speed up time. That was never an option. But now it is, again, bringing over more concepts from Planet Zoo. I like it. There we go. Okay, so here's, here's a good close-up view. So what I was hoping was that we could just drag and drop a Mosasaur or a uh, Lasmosaur or, you know, something Plesiosaur in there. And, you know, maybe we could make fences around it or, you know, be able to uh, add levels, uh, depth to the water, stuff like that. But that doesn't seem to be the case. What we can do is just like you see here, this is the Avery. Uh, you plot it down, it'll probably just start as a bubble. And then you can sort of extrude out and make it as big as you want it, really. It'd be interesting to see a park that was all just an Avery. That'd be cool. I'd love to know what happens when they break out as well. Um, that's something to bear in mind. You've got hotels over here. Don't know what this building is. Um, probably a shelter by the looks of it. You've got an uh, innovation center there. You've got research. But this is it. This is it right here. That is our aquatic dinosaurs, animals, whatever you want to call it. There's no there's no other no other thing that that could be. That has to be it. it can't be anything else. Why would you just have a reservoir of water? I mean, you've even got like the if you look very closely at um and hold on, I'll get my huge mouse in. You see here, this is the fence. Like, if you remember from the Mosasaur in Jurassic World Evolution or Jurassic World, it goes over. It sort of hooks back over to stop anything from, like, kind of jumping out. Gives the illusion. Um, yeah, and that sort of goes all the way around. It's almost like in Zoo Tycoon where you would have, you know, trainers that would go, Yeah, do the, do the flip, do a show. And that's what that looks like that could be. Um, you've also got, like... I know, it's almost like it cuts into the terrain, which is interesting. Because you've got, like, obviously a hill there, and that dips. Because all we've seen at the moment is just the top. Now, maybe they'll have underwater viewing areas. Um, it'll be interesting to see how different aquatic animals interact with each other. I mean, if you look over here, with the, you've got the Avery, right? Now, you can't obviously subdivide in the Avery, right? Or maybe you can. Because how are you going to have an Aquatus with like a, a Dimorphodon, right? The Aquatus would probably eat it. So the same thing applies with how will aquatic creatures work? How will this work? Um, can you like subdivide it or do you need to keep them in separate tanks because you can't just make one big one I assume or maybe you can I don't know but there you have it that does appear to be oh god oh I'm gonna have to make this really small now <laughs> what I actually love that they've added is a difference in how you construct your enclosures a little bit more thought goes into it with how you um so I'm just making sure we're all okay. Beaver white spot is the shark feeder. It could be. It could that could be the shark feeder that little bit. Um, what I like about this is basically it, it, all dinosaurs used to want is trees and plains and grassland. That was it. If a dinosaur had those two criteria filled, then it was fine. But now it appears like you know the crag and the you know that sort of thing, the reeds and stuff. Depending on what you put in your enclosure, dinosaurs want that and. Again, it's another thing that I feel like Jurassic World Evolution should have had in to start with. But maybe it was just they were on a time crunch and they just need to get it done for a certain time. But this is definitely, they've definitely put more thought. This is also interesting. Now, can Stegosaur and Triceratops kill each other? That's what I'm kind of curious about. If they've got low enough health or will they even fight? Uh, or if they are really in an enclosure that's too small, you know, will they constantly fight until one dies? Um, 
and depending, of course, on who's got the highest attack. I love this animation. That, that like, Triceratops one, there's, it just feels like it's from Jurassic World Alive. That's what that feels. Um, and then whoever wins gets the territory, right? So if that's overlapping. Now, once they fight, how do they not then overlap? Or does one just have reduced territory and the other one gets that contested territory? Because I assume they're overlapping because there isn't enough space in the enclosure. So if there isn't enough space in the enclosure, they are overlapping, they have, con they have a contested area, then they fight, one wins. Does that then mean that they never fight again and that's just the Triceratops territory and the Stegosaurus is reduced, therefore the Stegosaur now needs more space and wants to break out? That could be a, a way that it goes. But then that just means that like, anytime you see this, Anytime you see this cool animation, in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, for God's sake, I'm gonna have to make the enclosure bigger again. <laughs> that, I mean, it's cool to see it, but at the same time, it's like, it's gonna be one of these things that we, we see after so many times, we're like, oh, they're doing this again. So basically, at the moment in Dressing World Evolution, you make the enclosure with so many trees and so much grassland, and then once that's done, the enclosure's fi finished, right? You don't have to do anything again. But if these territorials change, depending on how they're fighting, then you kind of have to keep an eye on each enclosure. Let's say you play Dressing World Evolution for a, for a good few months. You're just going to get sick of that. You're going to be like, oh, this again. Okay, let's make the enclosure bigger. It's not going to be like... And I'm hoping that they're going to approach it from a different way. I do like it, though. I do like that we have some more interaction with dinosaurs, which, you know, JPOG didn't even have that. It was just like a set-like territorial dispute, and then it wasn't even anything to do with territory. But they, they've added that level of depth to it, which is quite nice. <gasps> Let's have a look. What we got? We got ground leaf. You got cacti. Um... You've got fruit and nut. This is forest, leaf, and fiber. Um, and judging by the scroll bar, it's not very big. We're basically seeing everything. You get forest, leaf, and fiber, and you get fruit and nut. Maybe you can research other, um, other kind of trees and stuff. Maybe that'll be, you know, something that you can do in future. Yeah, this is it. This is gorgeous. And this thing, I don't know what this is. It's like a little antenna that sticks out. You've got the viewing platform there. Uh, curved fence, nothing new there, but the rocks, and it's ju it just looks way more, it just looks nicer. It just looks a lot more appealing, a lot more pleasant on the eyes than Jurassic World Evolution, which was like green, green, and more green. Yeah, here we go. So this is new, uh, guests. So instead of just guests being like, they still are figures on a chart, basically. Now they're gonna have their own sort of wants and needs. You have your general public, you have your, your thrill seekers or adventure, uh, which is denoted by the gyrosphere. You've got your nature, so that is just people who like herbivores and all that stuff. And then you've got your luxury, which is also denoted by um, the truck tour or whatever it is. So desires, dinosaur variety, hotels and gyrospheres. Uh, adventure, you want gyros- Lagoons! There you go! Right there! Lagoons, that's what they're called. The enclosed, they're not called, like you got for Tyrannons, you got Aviaries, but for aquatic creatures, you've got Lagoons. So general want Aviaries, uh, viewing galleries, dinosaur count, innovation center. Oh, they want an innovation center, okay. Like, oh, maybe, maybe you can do more with an innovation center. Maybe you can actually go inside it and, you know, do some more stuff that way. Because otherwise it's just like, oh, well, you've got one. There you go. That's that neat sword. I like how we got Lagoons now. So here we go. We've got a T-Rex. Um, sporting a new color scheme, which I've never really seen before. I feel like we're going to get to be able to design a lot more of the aesthetics. I know in this video, they mentioned about you'll be able to do that. Um, like, but we could kind of do that anyway, right? So are they going to do more? Are they going to add more varieties? A bit like with the buildings, you get a color swatch tool. So you can actually be very precise with the color that you make it. Can you do that with dinosaurs? It would be interesting to see if, um... Like, if you made a dinosaur that was all red, then it would be more aggressive or something like that. I don't know. Something, something silly. <laughs> this looks like a mini hotel, like a mini resort. So with Jurassic World Evolution, you would have giant hotels, absolutely ginormous hotels. And they would take up so much space. And it really became juggling, like, oh my god, how am I going to fit this in here? But now, maybe you don't need a big hotel at first, and you get a little resort like it. Um, you've also got picnic benches here. And we don't have park benches still. We don't have bins by the looks of it, but we do have picnic tables. Um, although this is a completely deserted place. 
Um, so also, depending on what you want to target your, your clientele to, that looks like nature. Like, that would get more nature visitors in. So I think maybe there's like pre-designed things for or to attract. That's luxurious, I would say, with the, the modern design, the wavies and this weird structure on top. Maybe general. Or maybe these are just diff different uh, shops. So you've got um, a coffee shop. Or are these all the same shop? They might be. Yeah, it's uh, another one. It does look like that T-Rex. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe a little homage. Maybe you're right. That's interesting. Uh, the more variety, the better. I don't, I, I'm don't. i not going to say no to more coffee shops. Um, and this is quite nice. We get to actually... Re like, because before when it came to rotating, I th could you be very precise? I think you could lock it. But I don't know if you could rotate it on like the X axis or the Y axis, stuff like that. You could like, like probably like lock it in a few positions, I think. Um, but this one, you can actually now rotate all the way, like X, Y, Z, whatever rotation you want. Nothing new here. I think this is where they just talk about, yeah, the different kind of colors that you can go with. But they, they do hop on about it for quite some time, which makes me think that maybe there's more to it uh, than, we, than we first think like with the aesthetics like changing the skin maybe you'll be able to really change this, the color and have customization over it. so you go you got the main street you got this really huge building here i don't know what that is i mean that looks like a clothing shop from jurassic world evolution and then that's the end of it okay and the loser will go and have to rebuild their territory and find the things that it needs elsewhere ah there you go we that's no longer it. have that's that's feeders. the smoking gun right there yes he the one that gets the one that wins gets the territory and then the other one has to go and find the things that it needs based Basically, the foliage, uh, the size, and the trees and stuff. And that's when it could break out. So it uh, it is maybe going to be a bit of pain in the ass. <laughs> like, after a while, like, you, you kind of just don't want to put Triceratops and Stegosaur together. Around the enclosure of a big carnival, you will have lots of adventure guests. So when you place down uh, an amenity, you can tailor that to be more interesting to your adventure guests. And by doing that, you're going to make more money. Alongside the right, so yes, there will be certain. So when you place down a building, it will probably have like a diff different sets or loadouts um, for different things. A bit like, um, or at least maybe you'll be able to switch the things inside. So <laughs> harping back to JPOG one last time, when you place down a, a a restaurant or something, you could change the 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 food, you could change the side order, you could change the price, and with. Jurassic World Evolution, all you could do is just change the price and the capacity, and that was it. But now, maybe, you know, Thrill Seekers will like the hot dogs and chili or something. Or the Rex Burger. Yeah, remember those ones? I remember those ones. So we have, we have that. Um, there's also an image here I wanted to bring up, which is a bit blurred um, before we actually completely uh, move on altogether. Because they, they've talked about what we can expect with the dinosaurs, but this actually shows us the UI. Um, you've got overlap so here you go so when it comes to territory there's a certain level that dinosaurs can overlap and then be happy with and even something like you know this is a gallimimus which if you're you know you play dress with evolution you know they are really not that fussy um apparently with overlap it, it can be um area so that's just obviously the size uh, of its its enclosure uh, which is obviously very low because they don't really care uh social um social social position i don't know what that is position pattern i don't even know um obviously it's a number social population that's the one so it's got like three or something at the moment it's, again it only needs like one or two and it's completely fine and then you've got environment needs so you've got the water which is very low you've got ground leaf which is you know the stuff that was the crag or the the exotic whatever it was called um, and which didn't exist at all in the original. I think you could just put whatever you wanted down. It was really the trees that made difference. And forest. So and another really good thing they've got here is edit environment. So you can quickly go, instead of, you know, going to the side and trying to find a menu. Okay, right, tree, right, trees. Yep, there we go. You can just quickly go into the edit uh, environment tab with that little shortcut that's right there, which is really, really friggin' handy. Um, but thank you so much. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Oh, bye-bye.